McClintock initially looked at two genes that were involved in strains of maize that produced either colorless kernels or colored ones. So what were these two genes? The C prime and its recessive C allele. If present, a C prime allele would lead to colorless kernels, and this was true no matter what the rest of the genetic background might be. Because the presence of a C prime allele prevented pigmentation, it was called the inhibitor allele. The other gene known to be involved in pigmentation is the BZ gene. The capital B lowercase z is the dominant allele, and the lowercase b lowercase z allele is the recessive one. Okay, in the absence of a C prime allele, capital B lowercase z led to purple seeds, and the lowercase b lowercase z, the recessive, would lead to dark brown seeds. In addition to the two strains that would produce either colorless or pigmented kernels, there were some strains that had a tendency to produce mosaic kernels. In these plants, a third gene called the DS gene was known to be responsible for the variegated seed color. DS is short for dissociator because it was believed to be a region of unstable DNA. Mutation of this DNA in some aleroni cells, but not others, during seed development would account for the variegated, that is, striped or spotted pigmentation in individual kernels. So let's look more at what McClintock actually did. She mapped the three genes to maize chromosome 9. And after she did that, she isolated a male of maize that was homozygous for the dominant C prime allele, the dominant capital B lowercase z allele, and also had the DS allele. Then she had a female that was homozygous for the recessive C allele and the lowercase b, lowercase z allele, and also lacked the DS allele. And she mated these two plants. So here's the cross. The triple recessive female and triple dominant male parental genotypes are shown here. And here are the expected genotypes of the progeny of this cross. The expected embryonic genotype of the progeny is shown at the left on this slide. Those of the aluroni cells are shown at the right. Remember that the aluroni genotypes are against a triploid, not a diploid background, hence the extra components of the genotype. Now what's amazing to me is that McClintock was following not one, not two, but three genes against this triploid background. In the case of the DS gene, the DS allele is indeed unstable and dominant. Therefore, a stable allele, if present, would be recessive. As we'll see presently, the recessive state of DS is in fact its absence. We'll see that and understand that as we progress. The cross we just saw is illustrated in this schematic map of part of chromosome 9. The expectation from the cross is of course triple hybrid progeny, and there they are. So look at the three possible number 9 chromosomes in the triploid cells that must result from this cross. All right what should the seeds of these offspring look like? Now recall that the presence of the C prime or dominant allele of that gene should cause the production of nothing but colorless kernels in the progeny. The offspring phenotype should be cobs with all white or yellow kernels. Here's what McClintock found. There were in fact both colorless kernels and variegated kernels in which some of the cells could synthesize anthocyanins and some could not which then led to the spotted or streaked phenotype in these mosaic kernels. Not what she expected, right? Here's what McClintock reasoned to explain her observations. For some cells to have reverted to pigment production, the C prime allele must have been inactivated. McClintock hypothesized that this could happen if the chromosome containing the C prime allele were somehow damaged or broken. In other words, its activity was, was disrupted. She suggested that the unstable DS locus was occasionally active, causing chromosome breakage and thus inactivation of the linked C prime allele in a given cell and its progeny. And there it is. Without an active C prime, those cells that had experienced the dissociation, the DS effect, would make brown or purple pigment, while the surrounding cells remain colorless. Further development of the seed would lead to the variegated, i.e. mosaic, kernels.